All right, let's get into some ideas about how we can increase the burning of carbohydrates, gain improved energy levels, and better manage our weight. Apparently, understanding and leveraging metabolic flexibility might just be the key to unlocking a healthier, more vibrant version of ourselves. And joining me now is dietitian and CEO of BeFit Food, Kate Save. As always, wonderful to have you with me. Where are we starting today? What exactly is metabolic flexibility? I haven't come across the phrase before. I'm really happy to be talking about this because it really uh, is something that can help everyone. It's something that's very important for everybody's metabolic health. So it is separate to metabolic health or separate to our metabolism. Metabolic flexibility is about how we switch between burning carbohydrate and burning fat. Okay. And when we break down carbohydrate, we break it down into glucose. When we break down fat, we break it down into fatty acids and ketones. Now, some bodies are not very good at switching between burning carbohydrate and fat, which means that if they go on a low carbohydrate diet or they go on a fast or for periods without eating, they feel really low and flat because they can't switch to burning body fat. And we have almost unlimited stores of body fat. We have very limited stores of glucose. So if we're not efficient in converting at the way that we uh, process energy in our body, then we can feel really, really flat. This sounds like uh, why some diets may not work for some people and people get frustrated and go, well, they haven't found the right one for them. But how does diet influence um, an individual's metabolic, metabolic flexibility? Take us through a little bit about what we eat. So this really all comes down to our lifestyle and the fact that in this current era, we've got this chronic overnutrition. There is too much food over -nutrition. around. Overnutrition. Overnutrition. Yes. So there's less people that are dying of starvation than there are of people dying of overnutrition or too much food and that's across the world not just in our western countries now mm. and the issue with this is it's causing something called um I guess the best way to describe it is pre-diabetes or okay. insulin resistant. So it's where our body can no longer use glucose very well and we're building up this fat storage hormone. And when this gets high, it stops us from burning fat. It makes us store fat. And the number one thing that is doing this is ultra processed foods and highly refined carbohydrates. So this push, with low fat, high carb diets and processed foods is leading us down this path where there is no feast and famine anymore. We are constantly in a fed state and we are not burning body fat. Interesting. I'm regretting not riding my bike <laughs> in today, but can you explain the role of physical activity uh, just on that when it comes to improving our flexibility uh, metabolically? Yeah, so it is the number one thing that anybody can do, whether they have good or bad metabolic flexibility, doing physical activity will improve this. And the reason for this is because the energy in our body is all produced within the mitochondria of our cell. And these mitochondria also, uh, people talk about the Star Wars movies and the force. You can think of the mitochondria. The yeah. That's right, <laughs> as, as the force. So um, what that means is that these cells in our body or these mitochondria actually produce all of the energy and they can switch between fat and carbohydrate. But if our the rest of our body isn't efficient because we're eating the wrong foods or we're not sleeping well, or we're not fasting at all, we are constantly fed, then we go into fat storage mode and we cannot burn body fat. We can only store it. Okay. So exercise is this way to open up the transporters that lets us switch between burning fat and carbohydrate. So it helps everybody okay, to get fitter. So, so we've touched on diet, we've touched on exercise. What other lifestyle changes can someone make to enhance this flexibility we've been touching on? The number one thing is sleep. If you do oh, yeah, not okay. sleep enough or get good quality sleep, you will stimulate your cortisol, your stress hormone, and stress from any other source um, is also a cause of this metabolic inflexibility. However, sleep is the number one thing because without sleep, our body is not going into this really fasted state. We're not going into fat burning. We're increasing cortisol, which increases blood sugar levels and increases insulin. And in someone who already has this broken metabolism that can't really burn body fat, it's a compounding effect. And it is why we are seeing this obesity epidemic and diabetes epidemic.
Yeah, it's so interesting, and it's such a roll-on effect, especially you know, as you say, sleep, diet, exercise, all things we've touched on in the past on the program. So we're sort of bringing it all together, which is wonderful. So let's talk about how uh, improving metabolic flexibility will impact the risk of chronic disease, just to finish the program today. Yeah, so I think what's really important is that we really need to go back and reset our metabolism, okay. and that will help us to prevent diabetes or pre-diabetes, um, dyslipidemia, which is all of our different fats in our blood building up and causing conditions like cardiovascular and heart disease. So a metabolic reset is as simple as cutting out all the processed food and just eat good food. Have your steak, ch chicken, fish, meat, vegetables, cut out the processed stuff or do a bit of a fast, whether that's a 16-8 approach where, where we've talked about people not eating for 16 hours uh, yep, and only yep, yep. eating for eight hours of the day. That could be enough to reset metabolism if it's done with some consistency. Very well said by you. And of course, Kate, thanks for joining me on the program. I might have to start my restart uh, right now, but appreciate you. <laughs>